Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. Jesus forgave us of all sin, past, present, and even future sin. Andrew brought good news to me. I could understand the Bible more the way he taught it. Jesus forgave you one time, and that's for everything. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing to teach on a series that I've entitled, Are You Satisfied with Jesus? And I wrote this little pamphlet. It's just 30 pages or less in one day. I've edited it some since then, but I just sat down and wrote this based on what Philip said in John chapter 14, where Jesus said, If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. He was saying, Jesus, I'm not satisfied with you, but I'd be satisfied if I saw the Father. If Jesus doesn't satisfy you, the problem is with you, not with Jesus. And Jesus went on to say, Philip, if you see me, you've seen the Father. How do you say then, show us the Father? And most people would think, well, no, they, there's a difference. Jesus was in a body, and I spent a lot of time talking about this. I, I know that not everybody watches every day, so please go to our website or get these materials so that you can get this in its context. I hadn't got time to go back over it. But Jesus' body was like His vehicle that He used to get around in, and it was just a plain vehicle. It wasn't a Rolls Royce. It didn't look like God. It looked like just a natural, normal person. But inside, He was God, manifest in the flesh. He was the glory of God. And the problem wasn't that He wasn't a perfect representation of God. It was that Philip was looking on the vehicle that he got around in instead of the real him. The real you, the real me, isn't our physical body. It's the person that's on the inside. It says in 1 Samuel chapter 16, and verse 7, this is where Samuel came to anoint uh, David to be king. And Samuel had anointed Saul to be king. Saul was the tallest man in the entire nation. He was a huge, huge specimen of a man. And Samuel just assumed that the next king would be like that. And so when he saw Eliab, Jesse's oldest son, he said, surely the Lord's anointed is before me. But the Lord spoke to him and he says, DON'T GO BY WHAT HE LOOKS LIKE ON THE OUTSIDE. AND THEN IT SAYS IN 1 SAMUEL 16, 7, MAN LOOKS ON THE OUTWARD APPEARANCE, BUT GOD LOOKS ON THE HEART. GOD DOESN'T LOOK AT THE VEHICLE YOU'RE DRIVING AROUND IN. HE LOOKS AT YOU. GOD IS NOT DEALING WITH YOU BASED ON YOUR PHYSICAL FLESH. HE'S DEALING WITH YOU BASED ON WHO YOU ARE IN THE SPIRIT. AND THAT'S THE WAY WE SHOULD BE DEALING WITH EACH OTHER. AND SO I'M SAYING ALL THESE THINGS TO SAY THAT, SEE, PHILIP MISSED WHO JESUS REALLY WAS BECAUSE HE WAS ONLY LOOKING AT HIS VEHICLE. HE WAS ONLY LOOKING ON THE EXTERNAL. HE DIDN'T SEE WHO HE REALLY WAS ON THE INSIDE. AND WHEN JESUS ROSE FROM THE DEAD, EVERY SINGLE TIME THAT HE APPEARED TO HIS DISCIPLES, EIGHT TIMES RECORDED IN SCRIPTURE, THEY HAD TROUBLE RECOGNIZING HIM. SOMETIMES THAT'S A LITTLE SUBTLE. I USE JOHN CHAPTER 21. I USE MATTHEW CHAPTER 28, AND ESPECIALLY MATTHEW CHAPTER 28, VERSE 16 AND 17. IT SAYS THAT WHEN THEY SAW HIM, THEY DOUBTED. THESE WERE HIS 11 DISCIPLES, THE PEOPLE WHO HAD BEEN WITH HIM FOR THREE AND A HALF YEARS, DAY AND NIGHT, AND SOME OF THEM DOUBTED THAT IT WAS REALLY HIM, AND THEY WERE LOOKING AT HIM. JESUS EVEN SAID IN THE 24TH CHAPTER OF LUKE, HE SAYS, PUT YOUR FINGER INTO THE PRINT OF THE NAILS AND THRUST YOUR HAND INTO MY SIDE. MAN, he, JESUS HAD A PHYSICAL BODY, AND YET THEY HAD TROUBLE RECOGNIZING HIM. AND THE EXAMPLE I WAS USING AT THE CLOSE OF YESTERDAY'S PROGRAM WAS WHERE THE TWO DISCIPLES WERE walk, WALKING ON THE ROAD TO EMMAUS. THEY WERE TALKING ABOUT THE RESURRECTION. THEY HAD HEARD THE REPORT THAT JESUS WAS RAISED FROM THE DEAD, AND YET THEY WERE STRUGGLING TO BELIEVE IN IT. THEY WERE REASONING AMONG THEMSELVES, AND IT SAYS THEIR EYES WERE HOLDING. MAN, I DON'T HAVE THE WORDS TO DESCRIBE THIS QUICKLY. I'VE GOT ENTIRE SERIES WHERE I TEACH ON THIS, BUT WHEN YOU ARE JUST OPERATING OUT OF YOUR HUMAN MIND AND YOU AREN'T LETTING YOUR SPIRIT INSPIRE YOU, IT IS REALLY, REALLY HARD TO RELATE TO GOD. 
BECAUSE GOD IS A SPIRIT. JOHN 4, 24. GOD IS A SPIRIT, AND THOSE WHO WORSHIP HIM, I BELIEVE YOU COULD SAY THOSE WHO REALLY CONNECT WITH HIM MUST WORSHIP HIM IN SPIRIT AND IN TRUTH. AND YOUR BRAIN CAN BE A HINDRANCE TO YOU HAVING RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD. YOU CAN JUST TRY TO BE FIGURE EVERYTHING OUT. HOW COULD THIS BE? THAT'S WHAT THESE DISCIPLES WERE DOING. THEY HAD HEARD THE REPORT THAT JESUS WAS RAISED FROM THE DEAD, BUT HOW COULD THIS BE? THEY HAD SEEN MANY PEOPLE DIE. THEY'D NEVER SEEN ANYBODY COME BACK FROM THE DEAD. HOW COULD THIS BE? AND JESUS WALKED WITH THEM AND ASKED THEM WHY THEY WERE SAD. AND THEY SAID, ARE YOU ONLY A VISITOR IN JERUSALEM? YOU DON'T KNOW WHAT'S HAPPENED? HE SAID, WHAT THINGS? AND THEY BEGAN TO TELL HIM ABOUT THE DEATH, CRUCIFIXION OF JESUS. AND THEY SAID, AND SOME OF OUR COMPANY CAME AND TOLD US THAT HE WAS ALIVE. AND JESUS BEGAN TO REBUKE THEM. AND HE SAYS, HOW LONG IS IT GOING TO BE UNTIL YOU UNDERSTAND THE SCRIPTURES? AND BEGINNING AT MOSES AND GOING ALL THE WAY THROUGH THE OLD TESTAMENT, HE SHOWED THEM SCRIPTURE AFTER SCRIPTURE AFTER SCRIPTURE OF HIM BEING CRUCIFIED AND RAISED FROM THE DEAD. AND THEN THEY COMPELLED HIM TO ENTER IN AND EAT WITH THEM. THEY STILL DIDN'T KNOW WHO HE WAS. AND AS THEY SAT AT MEAT, THEY WERE EATING. IT SAYS THIS IN VERSE uh, 30. IT SAYS, AND IT CAME TO PASS AS HE SAT AT MEAT WITH THEM THAT HE TOOK BREAD AND BLESSED IT AND BREAK AND GAVE TO THEM, AND THEIR EYES WERE OPENED, AND THEY KNEW HIM, AND HE VANISHED OUT OF THEIR SIGHT. THEIR EYES WERE OPENED, NOT THAT THEIR PHYSICAL EYES WERE CLOSED. THIS IS TALKING ABOUT THEIR SPIRITUAL EYES WERE OPEN, AND THEY RECOGNIZED HIM NOT BY SIGHT, NOT BY WHAT HIS PHYSICAL FEATURES WERE, BUT they re- I BELIEVE THAT THEY RECOGNIZED HIM BECAUSE JUST THREE DAYS BEFORE, HE HAD TAKEN THE BREAD AND THE WINE, AND HE HAD HIS LAST SUPPER, AND HE BLESSED IT, AND THEY REMEMBERED THAT THIS IS EXACTLY THE SAME WORDS THAT HE SAID, THE SAME WORDS. THEY RECOGNIZED HIM BY WHAT HE DID, NOT BY JUST SIGHT. THEY HAD TO RECOGNIZE HIM BY THEIR HEART. AND HEREIN LIES THE KEY WHY ALL OF THESE DISCIPLES HAD TROUBLE RECOGNIZING JESUS IN HIS RESURRECTED FORM BECAUSE THIS SAME STORY THAT'S REPORTED IN GREAT DETAIL OVER IN LUKE CHAPTER 24, THE SAME THING IS ALL SUMMARIZED IN ONE VERSE IN MARK CHAPTER 16 IN VERSE 12, AND THAT SAYS, AFTER THAT HE APPEARED IN ANOTHER FORM UNTO TWO OF THEM AS THEY WALKED AND WENT INTO THE COUNTRY. WHEN IT SAYS HE APPEARED IN ANOTHER FORM, THIS DIDN'T MEAN THAT HE LOOKED LIKE A DIFFERENT PERSON. AGAIN, HIS BODY WAS THE SAME, BECAUSE IN LUKE CHAPTER 24 RIGHT THERE, AFTER HE HAD APPEARED TO THESE TWO DISCIPLES ON THE ROAD TO EMMAUS, THEY RAN BACK TO JERUSALEM, AND AS THEY WERE TELLING THE OTHER DISCIPLES THAT THEY HAD SEEN JESUS AND THAT HE WAS ALIVE, ALL OF A SUDDEN, JESUS JUST APPEARED IN THEIR MIDST, AND he, AND THEY DOUBTED AGAIN, IT WAS JESUS. THEY THOUGHT THEY WERE SEEING A SPIRIT, AND HE SAYS, TOUCH ME, FEEL ME. A SPIRIT DOESN'T HAVE FLESH AND BONE THE WAY THAT I HAVE. AND THEN HE TOLD THOMAS, HE SAYS, PUT YOUR FINGER INTO THE PRINT OF THE NAILS AND PUT YOUR HAND INTO MY SIDE. HE STILL, HIS BODY WAS THE SAME. IT STILL BORE SCARS. YOU KNOW, THIS IS A LITTLE BIT OF A SIDELINE. DON'T FORGET WHAT I'M SAYING. BUT TO ME, THIS IS SIGNIFICANT, THAT IN JESUS' RESURRECTED BODY, HE STILL HAD THE NAIL PRINTS AND THE SCARS OF CRUCIFIXION. WHEN WE GET A RESURRECTED BODY, OLD THINGS ARE GOING TO PASS AWAY. ALL THINGS ARE GOING TO BECOME NEW. WE WON'T HAVE THE DEFORMITIES. WE WON'T HAVE THE BIRTH DEFECTS. WE WON'T HAVE THE SCARS OF THIS LIFE. WE'RE GOING TO HAVE A GLORIFIED BODY THAT'S GOING TO BE PRISTINE, PERFECT. THE ONLY PERSON IN HEAVEN THAT WILL BE BEARING SCARS IS JESUS. THAT'S AMAZING TO ME. THAT'S AMAZING THAT ALMIGHTY GOD WOULD EVEN BECOME A MAN, BUT THEN TO THINK THAT HE WOULD WANT TO LIVE FOREVER IN A BODY THAT HAD SCARS, BUT THAT'S JUST BECAUSE OF HIS GREAT LOVE FOR US, THAT, MAN, HE'S GOING TO FOREVER IDENTIFY WITH US. AND SO ANYWAY, HE WAS IN A BODY THAT STILL REFLECTED. IT WAS STILL THE BODY. He, HE DIDN'T APPEAR LIKE YOU KNOW, A DIFFERENT ANIMAL OR SOMETHING LIKE THAT. HE WAS A PERSON. IT WAS A PERSON WHO WAS RECOGNIZABLE, AND YET THEY DIDN'T RECOGNIZE HIM. WHY? IT SAYS BECAUSE HE APPEARED IN ANOTHER FORM. YOU KNOW WHAT THIS FORM WAS? IT WAS A SPIRITUAL BODY. AND 1 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 2 AND VERSE 14 SAYS, 
THAT THE NATURAL MAN CANNOT UNDERSTAND THE THINGS OF THE SPIRIT. THEY ARE FOOLISHNESS UNTO HIM, NEITHER CAN HE KNOW THEM, BECAUSE THEY ARE SPIRITUALLY DISCERNED. YOU HAVE TO DISCERN SPIRITUAL THINGS BY THE SPIRIT. YOU CAN'T REASON IT OUT. YOU CAN'T JUST WAIT UNTIL YOU SEE IT, UNTIL YOU HAVE AN EQUATION. NOW, I'M NOT SAYING THAT CHRISTIANS DON'T USE THEIR BRAIN, THAT CHRISTIANS ARE JUST OPERATING SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER BY INSPIRATION AND INTUITION, BUT I AM SAYING THAT WE ARE NOT LIMITED TO JUST PHYSICAL, NATURAL THINGS. AND PEOPLE WHO ARE JUST OPERATING OUT OF THEIR OWN INTELLECT, THAT BECOMES A a BARRIER, A HINDRANCE TO THEM PERCEIVING THE LORD, JUST LIKE PHILIP. BACK TO THE ORIGINAL SCRIPTURES THAT I WAS USING IN JOHN CHAPTER 14, HE STRUGGLED TO SEE THAT JESUS WAS SATISFYING HIM, THAT JESUS HAD PROVIDED EVERYTHING BECAUSE HE ONLY KNEW HIM IN THE PHYSICAL REALM. HE DIDN'T KNOW WHO WAS INSIDE OF THAT BODY. HE DIDN'T KNOW THE REAL JESUS. HE he WAS BLINDED BECAUSE OF JUST CARNAL, NATURAL THINKING. IT SAYS IN ROMANS CHAPTER 8 THAT THE CARNAL MIND IS NOT SUBJECT TO THE LAW OF GOD, NEITHER INDEED CAN BE. SO THEN THEY THAT ARE IN THE FLESH CANNOT PLEASE GOD. YOU CANNOT PLEASE GOD. YOU CANNOT REALLY KNOW GOD IF YOU ARE JUST TRYING TO FIGURE IT OUT, IF YOU ARE WAITING UNTIL YOU SEE HIM, UNTIL YOU HAVE SOMETHING PHYSICAL, TANGIBLE COME AND PROVE TO YOU. YOU HAVE TO KNOW GOD BY THE SPIRIT. AND THIS IS WHERE PHILIP MISSED IT. HE ONLY KNEW GOD, HE ONLY KNEW JESUS IN THE FLESH. HE DIDN'T KNOW HIM BY THE SPIRIT. BUT NOW, WE CAN KNOW HIM THROUGH THE SPIRIT, AND WE CAN RELATE TO GOD, AND WE CAN HAVE A RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD THAT SURPASSES THE RELATIONSHIP THAT THE DISCIPLES HAD RECORDED IN THE GOSPEL BECAUSE THEY WERE ONLY RELATING TO HIM IN THE NATURAL. THIS IS THE REASON THAT HE WOULD... HE TOLD THEM 14 DIFFERENT TIMES. THERE ARE 14 SEPARATE INSTANCES IN THE GOSPEL THAT JESUS PROPHESIED THAT HE WOULD would DIE AND BE CRUCIFIED, AND SEVEN OF THOSE TIMES HE PROPHESIED THAT HE WOULD BE RAISED FROM THE DEAD. HE TOLD THEM THIS. EVEN THE PHARISEES REMEMBERED IT, AND THAT'S THE REASON THEY WENT TO HEROD AND SAID THAT THEY WANTED A a GROUP OF SOLDIERS TO GUARD THE TOMB LEST THE DISCIPLES COME STEAL THE BODY AND SAY THAT HE WAS RESURRECTED. THE PEOPLE THAT DIDN'T EVEN KNOW GOD REMEMBERED THIS, BUT HIS OWN PEOPLE, HIS OWN DISCIPLES, THEY they JUST MISSED IT. THERE WAS A REASON THAT THEY WERE CALLED DUH DISCIPLES, (laughs) BECAUSE THEY WERE DUMBER THAN A HAMMER IN JUST THEIR NATURAL SELF. THEY DIDN'T REMEMBER THIS, BUT ONCE THEY GOT BORN AGAIN, THE BIBLE SAYS THAT THE HOLY SPIRIT, JOHN 14, 26, BUT THE COMFORTER, WHICH IS THE HOLY SPIRIT, WHEN HE HAS COME, WILL TEACH YOU ALL THINGS AND LEAD YOU INTO ALL TRUTH AND BRING ALL THINGS TO YOUR REMEMBRANCE WHATSOEVER I'VE SPOKEN UNTO YOU. THAT WAS JESUS SPEAKING. ONE OF THE JOBS OF THE HOLY SPIRIT IS TO BRING THINGS BACK TO OUR REMEMBRANCE. THE HOLY SPIRIT WILL QUICKEN OUR HEARTS, NOT JUST OUR HEADS, BUT IT WILL BRING THINGS UP OUT OF OUR SPIRIT. WE CAN KNOW THINGS BY THE SPIRIT OF GOD THAT YOU CAN'T JUST FIGURE OUT WITH YOUR OWN UNDERSTANDING. YOU KNOW, I COULD GIVE YOU MILLIONS. I DON'T THINK THAT'S AN EXAGGERATION. I COULD CERTAINLY SAY THOUSANDS, BUT I COULD GIVE YOU A LOT OF ILLUSTRATIONS OF HOW GOD LED ME BY THE SPIRIT TO DO THINGS THAT IN THE NATURAL, THERE'S NO REASON TO DO IT, AND YET IT WORKS. YOU KNOW, SUCH AS GIVING THINGS AWAY LIKE THIS. DID YOU KNOW IT COST ME MONEY TO PRODUCE THIS? I HAVE TO HAVE EMPLOYEES. WE HAVE A MACHINE THAT PRINTS THESE THINGS OURSELF. THERE'S POSTAGE TO THIS. WE HAVE TO HAVE PEOPLE ANSWER THE PHONES AND TAKE THE REQUEST. IF YOU GO TO OUR WEBSITE AND ORDER THIS, DID YOU KNOW SOMEBODY HAS TO BUILD THIS WEBSITE AND MAINTAIN IT? AND I SPEND A LOT OF MONEY. IT TAKES ME OVER FIVE MILLION DOLLARS PER MONTH JUST TO PAY MY BILLS. AND YET I'M GIVING THINGS AWAY. DID YOU KNOW TO THE NATURAL MIND, THIS IS CRAZY. AND WHEN I FIRST STARTED GIVING THINGS AWAY, THE REASON I DID THAT IS BECAUSE JAMIE AND I, WHEN WE FIRST STARTED IN MINISTRY, WERE POOR. AND IT WAS MY FAULT TOTALLY. IT WASN'T GOD'S. I THOUGHT THAT IF A PERSON WAS CALLED TO THE MINISTRY THAT YOU HAD TO JUST DEPEND UPON GOD ONLY. YOU COULDN'T WORK A JOB. I DIDN'T HAVE THE RIGHT THING. AND THE SCRIPTURE SAYS THAT IF YOU DON'T WORK, DON'T EAT. AND SO HERE I WAS MINISTERING TO TWO OR THREE PEOPLE IN A BIBLE STUDY PER WEEK, AND that I WASN'T MINISTERING ENOUGH 
TO LIVE FULL TIME OF THE GOSPEL. I SHOULD HAVE BEEN WORKING A JOB, BUT I THOUGHT THAT I HAD TO BE JUST DEVOTED TO STUDYING THE WORD AND PRAYING AND MINISTERING THE WORD. SO BECAUSE OF IT, JAMIE AND I WERE POOR, AND WE WENT TO A MEETING AT CHRIST FOR THE NATIONS WHERE A MAN WAS PREACHING, AND HE WAS PREACHING ON PROSPERITY AND TALKING ABOUT HOW GOD WANTED TO BLESS US, AND MAN, I NEEDED IT. WE NEEDED IT. JAMIE WAS EIGHT MONTHS PREGNANT WITH OUR FIRST CHILD, AND WE HAD GONE TWO WEEKS WITHOUT ANY FOOD. AND I'M TALKING ABOUT THAT WE WERE POOR. SOME OF YOU TALK ABOUT BEING POOR JUST MEANS YOU HAVE TO GO GET A MCDONALD'S OR YOU HAVE TO EAT SOME OF THE FROZEN FOOD OR A CANNED FOOD THAT YOU'VE GOT AND YOU DON'T HAVE EVERYTHING YOU WANT. WHEN I SAY WE WERE POOR, I'M SAYING WE HAD NOTHING. IN OUR REFRIGERATOR, WE KEPT A LITTLE DEAL OF SALT SO THAT IT WOULDN'T CLUMP UP WHEN WE LIVED IN TEXAS BECAUSE OF THE HUMIDITY. AND THAT'S THE ONLY THING THAT WAS IN OUR REFRIGERATOR. I GUESS WE PROBABLY HAD SOME ICE IN THERE AND THAT WAS IT. WE HAD GONE TWO WEEKS WITHOUT EATING AND WE WENT TO the, HEAR THIS MAN PREACH ON THIS. MAN, IT WAS CHANGING US. I KNEW THAT IT WAS WHAT I NEEDED TO KNOW. WE WENT BACK TO HIS TAPE TABLE AND HE HAD ALL OF THIS TEACHING THAT COULD HAVE TRANSFORMED MY LIFE. AND I REMEMBER LOOKING AT THAT AND I COULDN'T GET IT BECAUSE WE DIDN'T HAVE A PENNY. I MEAN, WE HAD NOTHING. WE ACTUALLY RAN OUT OF GAS ON THE WAY TO THAT SERVICE AND I GOT ON THE SIDE OF THE ROAD AND LAID HANDS ON IT AND PRAYED AND IT STARTED BACK UP AND WE DROVE THAT CAR AFTER IT HAD RUN OUT OF GAS FOR A WEEK. <laughs> I HAD MORE FAITH THAN I HAD MONEY. AND SO WE WERE STRUGGLING. AND I REMEMBER LOOKING AT THAT THINKING THIS HAD CHANGED MY LIFE AND I LOOKED OVER AT JAMIE AND SHE HAD TEARS IN HER EYES. TWO WEEKS WITHOUT FOOD BEING EIGHT MONTHS PREGNANT. AND uh, I LOOKED AT HER AND I JUST MADE A DECISION RIGHT THEN. I SAID, FATHER, IF YOU EVER SHOW ME ANYTHING THAT WILL CHANGE ANOTHER PERSON'S LIFE, I'M NEVER GOING TO DENY THEM ACCESS TO IT BECAUSE OF FINANCES. AND I AT THAT TIME DIDN'T KNOW THAT I'D EVER PUT OUT ANYTHING THAT WOULD HELP SOMEBODY ELSE. I DIDN'T KNOW I WAS GOING TO HAVE A MINISTRY AND DO ALL OF THESE KIND OF THINGS. BUT THAT'S JUST A COMMITMENT THAT I MADE. YOU KNOW, IT CAME up OUT OF MY SPIRIT. IT DIDN'T COME TO MY HEAD. IT DIDN'T MAKE SENSE. HOW DO YOU BUILD A MINISTRY THAT NEEDS OVER $5 MILLION PER MONTH? THAT'S JUST MY U.S. MINISTRY. WE GOT 16 FOREIGN OFFICES. I PROBABLY NEED ABOUT SEVEN OR EIGHT MILLION DOLLARS A MONTH IN ORDER TO, to MEET MY OBLIGATIONS WORLDWIDE. HOW DO YOU DO THIS AND GIVE THINGS AWAY? OUR WEBSITE, YOU GO THERE. WE'VE GOT 200,000 HOURS OF FREE MATERIAL ON OUR WEBSITE. NEARLY EVERYTHING THERE IS ABSOLUTELY FREE. HOW DO YOU DO THIS AND HAVE A MULTI-MILLION DOLLAR MINISTRY? IT DOES NOT COMPUTE UP HERE. AND I'VE HAD PEOPLE COME AND PROPHESY TO ME THAT I'M OF THE DEVIL BECAUSE I GIVE MY THINGS AWAY. I NEED TO SELL IT. I NEED TO START DOING THIS. BUT IT JUST CAME UP OUT OF MY HEART. IT'S A DESIRE THAT I HAVE. AND YOU KNOW WHAT? HERE WE ARE. IT'S NOW BEEN, MAN, IT'S PROBABLY 45, 48 YEARS SINCE THAT INSTANCE. I HAVE GIVEN AWAY HUNDREDS OF MILLIONS OF BOOKS, CD'S, PAMPHLETS, DVD'S, OUR WEBSITE, WE HAVE OVER A MILLION DOWNLOADS PER MONTH FREE OF CHARGE. AND YOU KNOW WHAT? WE ARE PROSPERING. DURING THIS PANDEMIC, WE DIDN'T HAVE TO LAY OFF ONE SINGLE EMPLOYEE. WE DIDN'T TAKE ANY MONEY FROM THE GOVERNMENT. IT WORKS. THE POINT I'M MAKING THROUGH ALL OF THIS IS THIS CAME UP OUT OF MY SPIRIT. IT DIDN'T COME FROM MY HEAD. AND YET, I COULD NAME NAMES RIGHT NOW. I'M NOT GOING TO DO IT, BUT THERE'S OTHER VERY WELL-KNOWN MINISTERS THAT HAVE BUILT THEIR WHOLE MINISTRY ON SELLING ALL THEIR PRODUCTS, AND THAT'S FINE. THEY CAN DO WHATEVER GOD TELLS THEM TO DO, BUT THEY HAVE SEEN ME GIVE THINGS AWAY, AND THEY SEE THAT WE ARE PROSPERING. AND I NOW HAVE OTHER VERY WELL-KNOWN MINISTRIES THAT IF I WAS TO CALL THEIR NAME, YOU'D KNOW WHO I'M TALKING ABOUT. AND THEY NOW GIVE THINGS AWAY BECAUSE THEY'RE SEEING THAT IT WORKS. I DIDN'T LEARN THIS FROM SOMEBODY ELSE. THIS JUST come out, CAME UP OUT OF MY SPIRIT. AND THIS IS THE WAY THAT YOU HAVE TO RELATE TO GOD. AND NOW THAT I'VE DONE IT, IT MAKES PERFECT SENSE. THE BIBLE SAYS, GIVE, AND IT SHALL BE GIVEN UNTO YOU. GOOD MEASURE, PRESSED DOWN, SHAKEN TOGETHER, AND RUNNING OVER, SHALL MEN GIVE INTO YOUR BOSOM. SO I UNDERSTAND IT, AND NOW IT'S JUST BECOME A PART OF THE WAY I DO THINGS. BUT IT, came, it DIDN'T COME FROM MY HEAD. MATTER OF FACT, I HAD EVERYBODY AND THEIR DOG TELL ME THAT I WAS WRONG AND I WAS MISSING GOD TO GIVE SO MUCH STUFF AWAY. I'VE ACTUALLY HAD PEOPLE THAT RAN MY MINISTRY WHO WERE MANAGERS FOR US THAT THIS WAS A BONE OF CONTENTION AND THEY SAID, YOU'VE GOT TO START SELLING STUFF. AND I HAD TO GET RID OF THEM BECAUSE IT JUST WASN'T WHAT I HAD IN MY HEART. 
IT DOESN'T MAKE SENSE TO THE NATURAL, BUT MAN, I, IT WORKS. IT WORKS. I'M SAYING NONE OF THESE THINGS TO PAT MYSELF ON THE BACK. I'M SAYING THAT THIS IS KNOWING GOD BY THE SPIRIT. IT'S FUNCTIONING FROM THE SPIRIT INSTEAD OF FROM YOUR HEAD. AND THIS IS THE VERY REASON THAT MOST PEOPLE AREN'T SATISFIED WITH JESUS. NOT BECAUSE THERE'S ANY DISSATISFACTION IN JESUS. NOT THAT HE'S MISSED IT IN ANY AREA, BUT WE ARE JUST TRYING TO FEEL HIM. IN OUR PHYSICAL EMOTIONS, WE'RE TRYING TO FIGURE IT OUT. WE'RE TRYING TO SEE WITH OUR PHYSICAL EYES. HERE, we're, WE'RE WANTING SOME TANGIBLE PHYSICAL THING WHEN GOD IS A SPIRIT. AND TO REALLY CONNECT WITH GOD, YOU'VE GOT TO DO IT BY THE SPIRIT. THIS IS WHY PRAYING IN TONGUES IS SO IMPORTANT. I COULD GET OFF AND SPEND A WEEK OR TWO JUST TALKING ABOUT THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT AND SPEAKING IN TONGUES. BUT 1 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 14, VERSE 14 SAYS, THAT WHEN YOU PRAY IN TONGUES, YOUR SPIRIT PRAYS. WHEN YOU'RE PRAYING IN TONGUES, THIS BORN-AGAIN SPIRIT PART OF YOU THAT HAS THE WISDOM OF GOD, THE MIND OF CHRIST, 1 CORINTHIANS 2, 16, AN UNCTION FROM THE HOLY ONE SO THAT YOU KNOW ALL THINGS, 1 JOHN CHAPTER 2, VERSE 20. IN COLOSSIANS 3, 10, YOU'VE BEEN RENEWED IN KNOWLEDGE AFTER THE IMAGE OF HIM THAT CREATED HIM. THAT'S NOT TRUE UP HERE IN YOUR LITTLE PEANUT BRAIN, BUT IN YOUR SPIRIT, YOU HAVE THE MIND OF CHRIST. AND WHEN YOU PRAY IN TONGUES, YOU ARE PRAYING THE MIND OF CHRIST. YOU ARE RELEASING THIS SUPERNATURAL WISDOM. AND ALL YOU GOT TO DO IS SAY, GOD, WHAT AM I SAYING? AND THE SCRIPTURE SAYS, IF YOU PRAY IN TONGUES, PRAY ALSO THAT YOU INTERPRET. AND GOD WILL REVEAL TO YOU THIS WISDOM. MAN, IT IS SO IMPORTANT. YOU CAN'T REALLY FUNCTION IN THE SPIRIT REALM AS GOD WANTS YOU TO WITHOUT THE BAPTISM OF THE HOLY SPIRIT AND PRAYING IN TONGUES. PRAYING IN TONGUES IS JUST LIKE TURNING ON A SWITCH, FLIPPING A SWITCH AND TURNING ON THIS DYNAMO ON THE INSIDE OF YOU. IT SAYS IN JUDE CHAPTER 1, VERSE 20, BUT YOU, BELOVED, BUILDING UP YOURSELVES ON YOUR MOST HOLY FAITH, PRAYING IN THE HOLY GHOST. THAT'S TALKING ABOUT PRAYING IN TONGUES. AND WHEN YOU PRAY IN TONGUES, YOU ARE PRAYING ON YOUR MOST HOLY FAITH. AND THE NEXT VERSE SAYS, KEEP YOURSELVES IN THE LOVE OF GOD. WHEN YOU ARE PRAYING IN TONGUES, YOU ARE KEEPING YOURSELF IN THE LOVE OF GOD. YOU ARE RELEASING THE LOVE OF GOD. NOT JUST A PHYSICAL, TANGIBLE FEELING OF LOVE, LIKE, YOU KNOW, WITH YOUR MATE WHERE YOU HAVE A GOOSE BUMP OR SOMETHING, BUT this is, an, um, THIS IS A SPIRITUAL EMOTION. I DON'T EVEN KNOW IF I CAN SAY IT THAT WAY, BUT IT'S, it's NOT TANGIBLE, BUT it's, IT'S MORE REAL. THE SPIRIT WORLD IS MORE REAL THAN THE PHYSICAL WORLD. AND YOU CAN GET INTO A PLACE WHERE YOU RELEASE THIS SUPERNATURAL POWER OF GOD AND YOU OPERATE IN A WISDOM THAT GOES BEYOND CARNAL REASONING. AND A FAILURE TO DO THIS IS THE REASON THAT THERE'S PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM RIGHT NOW THAT YOU AREN'T SATISFIED WITH JESUS. YOU PROBABLY WOULDN'T HAVE SAID IT THAT WAY. YOU'RE BORN AGAIN. YOU KNOW THAT YOU'RE GOING TO HEAVEN. BUT THE TRUTH IS, YOU'RE DEPRESSED, YOU'RE DISCOURAGED, YOU'RE LONELY, YOU'RE FEARFUL BECAUSE YOU ARE JUST OPERATING IN THE PHYSICAL REALM. YOU AREN'T TAKING THE WORD. YOU AREN'T OPERATING BY THE SPIRIT. YOU'RE OPERATING ONLY IN THE CARNAL REALM. AND THAT'S A HINDRANCE, JUST AS PHILIP. HE WASN'T SATISFIED WITH JESUS BECAUSE HE ONLY KNEW THAT VEHICLE THAT JESUS WAS IN. HE WAS ONLY LOOKING AT JESUS' PHYSICAL BODY. HE DIDN'T SEE WHO THE REAL JESUS WAS. YOU'VE GOT TO GET BEYOND THE PHYSICAL AND YOU'VE GOT TO LIVE OUT OF YOUR SPIRIT. THAT'S THE REAL YOU. THE REASON I DO WHAT I DO IS TWOFOLD. FIRST OF ALL, GOD JUST TRANSFORMED MY LIFE, AND IT'S JUST LIKE THE GUY THAT THE LORD TOLD HIM, HE SAYS, DON'T GO TELL ANYBODY ABOUT WHAT'S HAPPENED TO YOUR DAUGHTER, AND HE, MAN, COULDN'T KEEP IT QUIET. WHEN YOU GET GOD TOUCHING YOU, YOU JUST WANT TO TELL SOMEBODY. YOU GOT THIS GOOD NEWS YOU WANT TO TELL PEOPLE. BUT BEYOND THAT, I BELIEVE GOD'S GOT A SPECIFIC CALL ON MY LIFE, AND I MEAN, GOD HAS ENCOURAGED ME THOUSANDS OF TIMES. AND ON NOVEMBER THE 4TH, 2014, HE WOKE ME UP AT 3 O'CLOCK IN THE MORNING, AND HE SAID, THIS IS THE REASON THAT I'VE RAISED YOU UP, IS TO CHANGE PEOPLE'S OPINION OF ME. AND AS THEIR OPINION OF ME CHANGES, THEN THEY, IN TURN, WILL GO CHANGE THEIR WORLD. OUR PARTNERS ARE ESSENTIAL TO EVERYTHING WE DO. 53% OF THE PEOPLE WHO WRITE US AND CONTACT US DON'T GIVE A THING, AND WE SEND THEM THE MATERIAL. AND THE REASON THAT I GIVE MY TAPES AWAY IS BECAUSE BACK IN THE BEGINNING OF OUR MINISTRY WHEN WE WERE IN SEGALVILLE, TEXAS, PASTORING OUR FIRST LITTLE CHURCH, I JUST MADE A PROMISE. I SAID, GOD, IF YOU EVER SHOW ME SOMETHING 
that could change another person's life. I'll never deny them access to it because of finances. The initial response that I get from people who come in contact with our ministry is that they just see God in a total different light than they've ever seen Him. That causes them to respond to God. The whole motive behind Charis is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, where Paul said, Be strong in the grace that's in the Lord Jesus, and the things that you have heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men and women who will be able to teach others also. That's been my whole thrust. And when I started Charis Bible College, it was because I could see that it was a way of fulfilling those verses. Through Charis, we go deeper with people than I can do on television or through a book or through a CD or anything like that. And so what we hope to accomplish is to make disciples. And it's already happening. We've got people on every continent of the world that are reaching people. And through them, we are making an impact that I could never do. If you enjoyed today's program, you can watch this entire series and over 17 years of Andrew's TV and radio broadcasts free for you to download and share with others by going to awmi.net. awmi.net is where to find encouragement when you're discouraged. awmi.net is where to find biblical truth when you need strength. You can always count on awmi.net for sharing God's unconditional love and grace. Andrew's brand new teaching, Are You Satisfied with Jesus?, is available as a booklet. And today, Andrew would like to offer it as his free gift to you. Go to awmi.net to receive your free copy and to order additional copies to share with friends and family for only $1 each. I'd like to encourage you to get this little pamphlet. It's very short, entitled, Are You Satisfied with Jesus? We also have CDs and then we have DVDs that were taken from my television program. But I tell you, these truths have revolutionized my life. These are some of the most important things that God has ever shown me, and I can promise you that very few Christians relate to God spirit to spirit. This would help you. Are you satisfied with Jesus? This new series is also available in a two-part CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these valuable resources are available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get this teaching. We want to say a special thank you to the Grace Partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your gifts make it possible to put free ministry materials into the hands of many people in need. If you're not already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. Call our helpline Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time at 719-635-1111. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today.